Before I start this video, I just wanted to acknowledge the fact that this video happens to be uploaded on September 11th due to my Friday and Tuesday upload schedule. Also, I feel obliged as an aviation channel to commemorate this video to the attacks that happened 17 years ago. Anyway, hello everybody and welcome back to another video. This video is very exciting for me as I will continue to explain. Every year I fly this route from Washington Dulles to London Heathrow. And as this is an overnight flight, I always dread the long sleepless night stuffed into an economy seat. Not today, however, as I originally uh, spent a little extra for an upgrade into business class. This is a real experience for me because it's been a dream of mine since I was a young, feeble boy to not only fly premium, but to fly on the upper deck of a Boeing 747-400. In specifics, however, today I will be flying on BA-292, which is set to depart at 10.20. This is the second British Airways flight today as British Airways operates two Boeing 747s each day into Dulles. Soon to be alternated into one 747-400 and one 787-9. Despite this, today's flight is definitely on a jumbo jet. Check-in for British Airways is at the far right of the Dulles' check-in terminal, located near Porter and Air India who have had to merge their check-in desks after Dulles' recent uh, international airline expansion. Security at Dulles is usually fast, but even faster with my premium security due to my Club World ticket. I did not film any of this for legal reasons, you know, and security and all of that. After security, there's a short underground train ride from the main check-in terminal to Concourse B, my departing concourse of this evening. After arrival into the B gates, there's a short escalator ride and a few steps across the terminal to the British Airways Lounge. Literally the most convenient lounge I've ever been to. The British Airways lounge is very large considering there are only two flights a day with British Airways to Dulles. I guess it's also a way of displaying how prominent British Airways' is status is at Dulles, among all the other international airlines with it being one of the first international airlines to serve flights from Dulles back when it was BOAC. Also with aircraft like the Concorde being flown from here, it's no wonder they are so prominent. Now the British Airways lounge is split into three areas, the first of which being the lounge. The lounge is the area with all the seating and mainly for people who want to chat or work. Each seat is equipped with an outlet and a little table of some sort. The lounge also has an area with light snacks, soft drinks and some alcoholic beverages. If you want some real alcohol however, the second area is the bar. I'm guessing the bar would be under US law so legally I would not be allowed to enter as I'm not over 21. In England however, the drinking age is a measly 18. If supervised and with a meal however, that goes down to crazily 13 years old. The third area of the BA lounge is the restaurant. The restaurant is of course the area uh, with dining tables for dining and eating full course meals. I did not dine here as I'd be getting food on the plane, so I did not see any point. I did venture into the restaurant however, as this is the only area with a view out over the apron and a view out to runway 19 center, where I managed to capture a very glary video of my aircraft landing inbound from London Heathrow. After a good couple of hours of lounging, I decided to head down to the gate uh, a few minutes earlier than the announcement in the lounge. I find it's always best to do this as then you're not waiting in a line to get down the elevators at the lounge. After about a five minute walk to gate B44, I joined the line at group two. It appeared by an empty line that group one, the first class, were already on board. I'm always glad to walk on board a Boeing 747 as it's my favorite aircraft and my second most flown plane coming in just six flights shorter than the A320. Walking upstairs to the bubble as some people like to call it, it was just an amazing moment and I could barely hold my excitement. My seat was first on the left and situated just above the jet bridge. Lining the windows were four huge lockers with enough space to fit a small suitcase. I was facing backwards which was a bit of a weird sensation but I was on the upper deck so I didn't really care. My business class seat in particular had a further two feet of legroom. This was due to it being the last seat in the upper deck. For work and food there is a huge tray table with a small light which automatically switches on for when the table is pulled down. You can also adjust the tray table for comfort when working or eating. Despite my power of being a millennial and having the stereotype of figuring out how technology works, I didn't get how to pull out the TV from its base. You are also blessed with a large fluffy pillow and a full duvet, not just some thin sheet. 
This was very useful later on in the flight when the cabin got quite cold. To the expectation of an average business class flyer, which I was not, you also receive a leather amenities kit, which oddly enough had a strong scent of orange. Within the amenities kit, you were given an eye cover, socks, a small bag of soaps and moisturizers, earplugs, a toothbrush and toothpaste, and a pen. Adding to the list of hospitality points, you are also given a pre-takeoff beverage of either water or orange juice. Now while we taxi out to the runway, I will read the menu to you. Starters for this evening's meal will include the choice of Santa Barbara smoked salmon with horseradish cream, mushroom velouté with a tarragon cream, fresh seasonal salad with cherry tomatoes, seeded crunch and balsamic olive oil. All of these include bread and butter with a beverage of your choice. The mains, however, are as follows. Seared fillet of Midwestern beef with potato au gratin, roasted squash, savoy cabbage, and whole grain mustard just. Roasted haddock with herb mashed potato, glazed carrots and broccoli. Orchiquette pasta with cream pesto sauce, roasted courgette, artichoke, and pine nuts. Then the dessert menu consists of Glacé lemon tart with fresh raspberries Warm chocolate orange croissant pudding with orange custard sauce And finally a cheese board with Point Reyes original blue boucheron And prairie breeze cheddar celery apricot and farmhouse chutney There's also a union hand roasted coffee option after dessert Which is sourced from a small holder farm in Peru then hand roasted in eastern London Right now, however, I'll be quiet for a bit and let you enjoy the sound of those Rolls-Royce engines carrying this magnificent aircraft into the air. Now we're on our way up to our cruising altitude of 38,000 feet and for anybody who's curious we just departed from runway 19 left which is Dulles's most northeastern runway. There are some great views when flying up the east coast at night, of course the camera never does justice but here's a fabulous view of Baltimore whilst we're still climbing up. Still on our way up and you're given a hot towel. For any lounging, unlike most other business classes, Club World Seat needs you to bend forward, unlock the footrest and lower it manually. It's only a small negative, but for older people who may be going to see family, it's important to allow for as much comfort as possible. And this could be quite challenging for an older citizen, unlike other airlines where this feature comes automatically at the press of a button. Now we'll have a closer look at the IFE system. There is a fat remote at the left of your seat to control the TV with. This is quite an old version of British Airways' IFE system. Don't worry, if you manage to get on a flight with a 787-777-A380 or even one of BA's soon arriving A350s, the IFE will not be this bad. Despite this, however, there are lots of movies that are all up to date and a lot of archiving movies as well, which makes it easy enough for a six to seven hour flight if you decide to stay awake, that is. Again, the interactive map is a very old version, but enough for seeing how long there is left of the flight or other very simple information like that. Now the seat has three positions. They are all called takeoff, which is where the seat is at a 90 degree angle, lounging, which is used for eating or watching movies, and then there's the bed mode, which we'll get onto later. And now the food came. First off, you have an appetizer, which consists of salted nuts and the beverage of your choice, which is in a crystal glass, may I add. Then your starter arrives, where I chose the Santa Barbara smoked salmon with horseradish cream. 
And then your main course where I chose the seared fillet of Midwestern beef with potato au gratin, roasted squash, savoy cabbage and whole grain mustard just. I did not choose any dessert or coffee and after that I slept. And boy did I sleep. In fact, I slept all the way until I was woken up for breakfast over Ireland. Now the breakfast menu is also given to you before takeoff. I just didn't read it out to you before then. I will read it out to you now. The breakfast options were a full English wrap or a mozzarella and tomato savory pastry. These are both served with Greek yogurt and a croissant with butter and jam. There was then the choice again for a beverage, which I chose coffee, just to give me that extra boost to get me through the following day. Now just as we begin our descent, uh, I'm just going to take you on a bit more of a detailed tour. So as I said, my seat board has four large lockers, which turned out to be very useful throughout the flight. There are also four windows, uh, which I get all to myself, uh, which is great due to the view I get looking over the engines of this jumbo jet. Just behind the footrest, there is another large table which you can put suitcases on during the flight. This can't be used for takeoff or landing, however. The tray table, again, as you can see, folds out and is very adjustable. Underneath is another closer slot for safety cards and vomit bags with next to it a very unreliable charging slot and a compartment for putting footwear or small bags. Then there are controls for your seat along with the headphone jack, TV remote and screen divide. While we're on approach, I thought however, I might as well take this opportunity to tell you a bit more about the plane I was on. Golf Charlie Indigo Victor Bravo is the 747-400 I've been flying on in the past six hours. It was delivered to British Airways in February of 1994 and they've been operating it for almost 25 years. It was the 1018th Boeing 747-400 to ever be built. A fun fact about this plane is that it was dedicated to the London Heathrow to Sydney route back when this was operated on a 747. Nowadays that route is operated by a 777-300 and this aircraft generally flies to Denver, Las Vegas, Johannesburg and Washington DC. After landing in London Heathrow, there is nothing premium to the average passenger. You have to head down through customs and down to baggage claim like any other passenger. Was it evil to put this at the end of a video unexpectedly? I don't know, but I wanted someone who was a true subscriber and watched till the very end of my videos. Anyway, if you're new here and have no idea what's going on, don't worry, but you can win this too. To win this Gemini Jets 1-400 model of an American Airlines Boeing 737-800 in the One World livery, you have to do two things. First of which is to subscribe to my channel. Second of which is to leave a comment saying you are a subscriber and you want this model. I will not count just a comment, you have to physically say you want this model and that's just so I don't pick up someone who's actually not subscribed and just wanted to say he liked this video. I will announce the winner in about two weeks time just to give people enough time to submit. Tell me what you think of this new type of a trip report, whether you like me talking in it or you wanted me to just go back to, you know, the subtitles and the boringness of ness. Yeah. Okay, so apart from that, tell me what you think, and I will see you in the next video. Bye. <laughs>